So, you want to go on a grand adventure, sail the open seas, progress civilization from the invention of the wheel through the Bronze and Iron Ages, and walk into the hallowed halls of eternal glory? Well, put on your horned helm, fellow Viking, as I give you the information you'll need to navigate through the wilderness and upcoming trials of your journey through Valheim. Coded into our DNA as humans is the need to develop a home, a base of operations, and that instinct will serve you well as you find yourself washing up on the shores of consciousness. Aside from the pride and aesthetic of towering constructions, at the very least, you'll need a roof and a bed underneath if you want to control where you spawn when you die. Yes, you will die, Viking. Get used to the idea now. A bed and a roof forms the bare minimum of what you'll need, though if you want to use the bed voluntarily to pass the night, you'll need to include a fire nearby. Your fires must be placed directly on a ground surface and produce smoke that will damage you and starve itself of oxygen if not accounted for in your construction. A simple way to accomplish this is to place your fire on an external wall with a small chimney to vent the smoke. More elaborate builds I'll leave to the exercise of the viewer. Oh, and be sure to actually claim your bed before you leave your new abode, or all this work will be for naught. This is something you can use in your favor if you find yourself on a new island. Build a small shack and bed, then claim it immediately to change your spawn point. Before you get access to the instantaneous travel of portals, this is almost necessary to protect against finding yourself on the wrong side of the world and no boat. Just be sure to set your spawn point back when you return. Before you begin construction, you will need a workbench. You'll unlock four different types of workbenches as you move through the ages. The basic workbench, the forge, the stone cutter, and the artisan table. They will allow construction of their associated objects within their radius, but if you want to actually craft or repair at the bench, it'll need to be protected with a roof and some walls. Like a bordello employee, these coverings don't need to be extensive, which is nice for when you start traveling out into the wild to gather materials and find yourself with tools on the verge of breaking. The benches also allow repair of constructions within the radius, which is relevant when you are faced with worsening weather or the rampaging fauna. On top of that, benches also prevent monster spawns within their construction radius, and items dropped on the ground close by won't despawn. Wildlife will continue to appear, though. As you accumulate experience and materials, your benches will need to be upgraded in order to allow you to increase the power of your equipment. These upgrades appear in the form of extra constructions that need to remain close to their associated bench. While you can just jam the extra pieces nearby haphazardly, it can begin to get tedious to move around the ever-expanding conglomerate. To that end, I want to remind you that you can place the upgrades above or below the bench to save some space. This is especially powerful if you constructed your building on stilts or a hill, as it is trivial to open up the floor and hide the extraneous equipment underfoot and out of the way. When it comes to more elaborate buildings, you'll need to pay attention to the support requirements of the pieces you place. With the hammer out, each building piece will highlight a solid color to tell you its associated level of support, beginning with foundation level support at blue. As the level of support decreases, this highlight will progress from green to yellow, orange, and finally red. If you are building tall, use as few pieces as necessary to reach your target height, and you will have an easier time maintaining your required support levels. The core wood logs are especially good for this purpose, and stone connected to the ground will count as foundation as well. I strongly encourage players to take their time and enjoy the building process in between adventures. There's no rush. Not only that, but the rested buff is very useful, so outfitting your home with all sorts of comfort will work towards making you more resilient when it is that you finally do leave. Now that you have a home, it's time to go out exploring. There isn't anything put in the game that will not be useful to you, so feel free to bring back some of whatever you find in the wilderness and store it in chests. Of course, some will be more useful than others, but that distinction will come with experience. Hunt animals for their meat and skins. Pick herbs, mine ore, bring back wood and stone to expand your base. The cart will be a godsend early on, once you have acquired some bronze. It will allow you to move, albeit slowly, a larger amount of goods than you could hope to haul on your person. You may also consider the construction of a path or road from your base to your favorite gathering spots to enable easier cart travel. Of course, to retrieve these riches will require you to brave the dangers that exist in the world, so you'll want to make sure you are well equipped before you head out. Remember that the world is more dangerous at night, so you may want to sleep in your bed to ensure that you have a full day ahead of you. Unfortunately, the game only allows one person per bed. 
I thought this was a Viking world. Before we get to combat gear, I want to remind you to not neglect your axes and picks. Upgraded versions not only do more damage to world objects, but have increased durability, letting you stay out gathering for longer. Also remember that you can carry more than one of a tool, and swap out when the first one breaks. As the axe can double as a combat weapon, you'll probably find yourself defaulting to using it for both, especially early on, so having a spare will provide some nice insurance. So, weapons. There are three primary damage types in the game, slashing, piercing, and blunt. I don't want to spoil anything for the discovery-oriented players out there, so I'll say this. Make sure you have these damage types covered among your arsenal. When you hit an enemy, you'll see a damage number in one of three colors. White is standard damage. A number in yellow means you hit harder than expected because the monster is weak to the damage type from that weapon, and a gray number indicates a resistance to that damage type. This system also applies to the elemental damage of fire, frost, and poison. These typings are not just for show. Is there a best item to use? Yes, yes there is. But it's not what you think. This is the best handheld item in the game. Yeah, you saw that right. Everything else is flash and pizzazz compared to the shield. I tried for hours and hours to refuse to carry a shield, and when I finally put that notion aside and started using one, I died a lot less. Shocking, I know. Your character is not nimble enough to avoid hits forever. Your stamina will eventually run out. Stop trying. Not only does the shield vastly reduce the damage from hits, but there is a parry mechanic in-game. If you time your block appropriately, you'll get a bonus to the amount of protection provided against the attack, and you will stagger your enemy for a short time. This stagger is what makes the shield so damn good. The enemy will be locked in place for a moment and take bonus damage from attacks while in their stagger animation. Not only that, but the window to land this parry is huge. Not in small part because attack animations from enemies telegraph well in advance of the hit landing. Use it. Parry those suckers and pound them into oblivion. Additionally, don't neglect the value in carrying some portal materials with you after you have unlocked that ability. Keep some portals around in your base that go nowhere, so you can drop a temporary connection to where you are out in the world. This works not just as death insurance, but a quick method for repair, retreat, or even a spontaneous appearance of that monster known as Wife or husband, or equal opportunity masochist here. That brings us to the consumables portion of this guide. The final piece of the puzzle for exploration is your food. You can have up to three food buffs running at once, and each food will add health and stamina to their associated buffers. These buff amounts will degrade over time, and the icon will flash when they begin to get low. Eat again to regain the full buff amount. Don't neglect your food buffs, even if you are just chopping wood in the world. If you keep a variety around, you can tailor your buffs to your current activity. Mining? Eat some stamina-oriented food. Exploring a dungeon? You'll probably want that health. A lot of the random bits and bobs you'll find in your travels will be relevant to consumable production, whether that be food, elemental protection meads, or potions. It all starts with the cauldron, which not only enables you to cook your more fulfilling meals, but is the first step in the process to making the drinkables, which require the fermenter. The creation of tasty liquids requires multiple days. I have found it handy to have more than one fermenter available and create in batches. This tool is not optional. You will be required to master the fermenter to finish the game. You'll find carrot and turnip seeds in your travels, among other things. Use the cultivator to till some soil and grow those few seeds into a nice farm. Neglect farming at your own peril. The gains from the process are worth the toil. Not only is it an easily sustainable food source, they will produce some of the best buffs to which you'll have access. Of course, there's also the bounty of the oceans to reap as well, whether your tool be rod or harpoon. The world of Valheim is a harsh yet conquerable playground of life and death. And yet, as so many things, the journey is one best enjoyed in the company of friends. So grab your buddies, hoist a tankard, and forge a path to join Gubaji and Valhalla. Happy hunting, and may your corpse runs be swift and few.